Mac is still down and out without an engine or transmission. So this week, it's transmission time. Let's go. This is where we left off last time. Got this input shaft mostly assembled. Just got to finish pushing on that bearing and secure the nut. And then today I have all these parts laid out for the pinion shaft and some new bearings and so forth. That is going to get assembled, all the gears assembled on the pinion shaft so we can ultimately put this transmission back together. Some of the biggest differences with the way Porsche evolved their transmission is here in first gear. This gear has good dog teeth, they're, they're in good shape, so we're gonna use them as is. But this energizer block and the stop block and the energizer band is, this is the early style, and there's really only one band. It goes here on the left. I had to look at the workshop manual to look at the orientation of all these parts because First gear is one that you typically just downshift into. So that's why there's only one band. It only has to energize in one direction as you downshift into first. You should be stopped when you shift into first, but if you're not, the speed will only have to, to slow it down to go into first. So that's, that's what we're working on now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the new synchro ring in. This is the uh, brand new part. And then just like everything else, I've inspected these parts for wear and I've taken off any of the sharp burrs here on the end of these things. You don't want your band to get hung up on either the dog teeth or the inside of the synchro ring. The synchro ring is brand new, it's really smooth, but these are sliding pieces, so you don't want any sharp edges to catch any other edges within the gear assembly. So I've inspected everything, it's all in good shape. No major wear here on these blocks. Just a few shiny spots, so that's normal. The workshop manual shows that this angle lines up with this cut right here, just like that. And then this ramp here goes on that side. And you guys know I'm building two transmissions. I'm gonna put this one together with the old parts. The new transmission that I'm keeping for my higher horsepower uh, engine build, that is gonna be fully upgraded with all the latest synchro parts. So the first gear has a different stop block. It's still one energizer band, but it goes all the way around. So as the years went by, the Porsche transmission became easier to shift into first. That's where most of the developments occurred. Also the dog teeth, instead of being symmetrical, like a little tent, they're just slants. So that means that the, the sliding sleeve and the dog teeth, a whole bunch of parts, all the energizer bands, all that stuff gets replaced with updated parts. The gear itself is the same. It wants to hold itself down, but it's just opening up on its own. So we might need to use the zip tie trick on that. That helps close it down a little bit. Or makes it easier to install, hopefully. This ring should have a lot of friction on it as it interacts with the dog teeth there. But you can see the energizer blocks inside also will work too. See it moving in there, it pushes against itself and expands that energizer ring to create even more friction from the inside. The only thing I like to do is take this opening here and just shift it around so it doesn't coincide with any of the openings in the dog tooth. So let's just move that over. We'll leave it right there. We also have the needle bearing too, which I have it organized 
with the number that corresponds with the number of the gear. So the gear numbers are out here. So that means this came out of the assembly this way. So you just need to come up with a tube that can push on the inner race only. The press does not interfere with the outer race. It only is touching the inner race. That means we can push it down just like that. That'll be. That still feels good. And then the rest of the gears, fourth, third, second, first, that all fits right in there. Keep that covered. Last time I was here, this tubing here was interfering with the threads, but this is now a larger size tube, so this should go right over it. We'll get a new nut for that one and uh, clamp it down. So I'm gonna finish assembling the pinion shaft and then we'll try to line up the gears and make sure everything is in correct position. This is fourth gear going on. Um, the right correct serial number there, 6614. And it goes on this direction. You can see this has a shiny surface that mates up with that bearing, so. These are splined and once it feels like it's locked in, it should just slide over. Make sure the bearing still spins, which it does. Then it gets the spacer sleeve. Make sure it's nice and clean. No direction on this really. Then we go for, this is third gear. And you can see that the wear pattern on this is equal with the wear pattern on that. So that means this goes this way. We'll double check this with the, with the main shaft. Next up is a thrust washer. We'll put it this way. And then second gear is all ready to go. New synchro, faces upward. It's a nice needle bearing on there, so that slides really well. No thrust washer here, but it does get this star guy. And I can put it either way. It looks like from the wear pattern, it looks like it goes this way.
fits over there, and then the slider. And these are the early parts. Um, on my other transmission, which is designed to handle more power, I'm going to upgrade both the sliders and the, I call these the spiders or the stars. Uh, the newer versions in the 915 are much wider here. And all the torque is transferred from the shaft onto these ends right there. And so the newer ones have wider parts so they can handle more power. But like I said, this one's going to back together all stock, just like that. The other thing to pay attention to too is this is a symmetrical slider. It doesn't really matter which way it goes on. I'm just putting it on the way it came apart. But if you have a non-symmetrical first gear dog tooth, then you need to make sure the two pieces are correct. This is the way it came apart. We'll put it right back together the way it came. I'll go ahead and slide this on. Might need to tap that one down slightly. There we go. And now first gear. also spins well. What I have it here as two thrust washers. Once again, lining up the wear patterns. I'll try to tap this new bearing down. Just got to go a little bit. And then this is the race. We'll put this in a baggie, but this goes in the transmission housing. It spins just like that. And that's as far as we can assemble this until we get it in the housing. Then we can add on the reverse and, first and fifth gear. This contraption is what I use to take the old nut off. This is the old one right here. And I'm getting ready to torque the new nut on. That's gonna be a critical torque value for the whole input shaft and it's 130 foot pounds of torque. This is a brand new nut, got it right from the Porsche package. So I'm going to put the, the wrench on this and hopefully get to 130 foot pounds without bending the shaft. That's what all the wood here is for. And I don't have a torque wrench that's, that's like an open-ended torque wrench. So I'm gonna have to just use a, a long wrench here, um, adjustable wrench on a long bar, which I measured is 34 inches. I did just a little bit of math here and I know that I got to apply 45 pounds to the end of this bar. That equals the 130 foot pounds and I'm gonna use my bathroom scale to estimate the amount of torque going on the nut there. That should be close enough. It's gonna get, um, the way this nut works, it, it gets pounded down inside a detent on the shaft and that's a locking feature so it should never come undone but that doesn't that does affect the the pressure on the gears and also the pressure here on the splines which was problematic before so i want to make sure it's close as possible to the spec if i just watch as i pull i should be able to get it close So this one should be for the final value here. There's 20, 30, what did I say? I said, uh, oh, 45 pounds, so we got, we got a ways to go. Still tightening, there's 40.
And that's it, 45 pounds. We'll do it one more time. Make sure it's all accurate here. Yep, that was about 46, 47 pounds. So it's now torqued. And I didn't see any, any major bending or any, any bad things happening here to the shaft. So in good shape there. This is the part that gets pushed into that little divot there. That creates the locking feature. If for some reason there's a problem and I need to take this back off, uh, I will do that before I just pound that in. So I'll put a note on here to remind myself to indent this. The pinion shaft is also complete. It gets a nut here on the end, which I got a new one as well, but I can't torque this nut until it goes in the housing. There's the uh, stack up here, which is reverse and fifth gear on that side. Same with this, we'll get this uh, torqued as well with the nut on the end. That will be next week. Next week we'll get these in the housing and the housing will be cleaned. We'll start setting up the pinion depth and the differential ring and pinion, get all that stuff so this will run nice and quiet again like it did before I took it apart. But these shafts are now fully rebuilt and ready to go. Thank you guys for watching another transmission video. We're getting closer. Uh, if you haven't already picked up a It's Only Metal shirt, they are available again at renin.io. Please go check out his site and uh, pick out this shirt or even another one. Mm -hmm.